Sigoli Swagwake. Hello everyone. Welcome to Ungwakwa, our foods. Today we're going to be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on making a corn husk doll. We hope to have more on our foods in future videos, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on notifications for new uploads. Yo, ya won't go on there are many different ways to make corn husk dolls. For example, the doll on the left is a doll I recently made, and the doll on the right is one I made in 1994. To hear a version of the story of how the corn husk doll lost her face, check out this video on our YouTube channel. Here are the supplies we will need a clean little wash tub, corn husks, single strand sinew, scissors, a marker, a tape measure, and a brown paper grocery bag. For the corn husks, I like to use husks from the grocery store, typically used to make tamales. I know, we're corn growers and this sounds absurd, but there are a couple things to keep in mind. First, we do save as many of the nice husks as we can during the frenzy of harvest, especially the ones with beautiful pinkish tints. They make for some beautiful dolls. Second, the corn we grow typically has skinnier and longer husks than the ones commercially sold for tamales. The wider, thicker husks are great for making dolls. Three more things to note about the husks. First, there's a smooth side and a rough side. I like to make sure that I make the doll so that the smooth side is facing out. Second, I refer to the skinny end of the corn husk as the top and the wide end as the bottom. Third, corn husks are from nature and they come in all shapes and sizes. Keep this in mind as we make the doll. Next, let's talk about the thread. I like to use single strand sinew. It's a wax thread that is already split, unlike most other artificial sinew. The only place I've been able to find it is through Knock Bay. You can order it online through their website. All right, let's get down to making a doll. First thing is we need to fill our little wash tub about a third of the way to the top with hot water. Next, we're gonna take our tape measure and measure out 11 inches with our marker. This will help us figure out how long to make the arms. Find an average size husk, both average in width and height. These will be the arms. Soak that husk in some water. Now for this demonstration, I'm soaking each husk separately so you can follow along easier. When I'm making dolls, I throw a bunch of husks in the water and pick through the soaked husks. Next, we're gonna take that husks out of the water and um, squeeze out some of the water. Then we're going to split that husk in half and then we're going to turn the pieces so that the tops are facing each other and we're going to measure out to be that 11 inches on either side. Then we're gonna take the middle and roll up that middle really tight and we're gonna keep rolling and rolling and then we're gonna take a piece of that uh, sinew and tie around the middle. So I'm just bending this in half so I can see where the middle is and then this is going to be the knot that we're going to use throughout all of the doll. We wrap it around once and then twice so that um, we get a really nice ratcheting action with this waxed thread. We're going to trim it a little bit, but because this is wax, you don't want to trim it too short because the string will come undone. Then we're going to go to the other one of the arms and we're going to roll that up again. And then we're going to tie some string around there. But for this, we're going to leave a longer string hanging down. Um, both of the, the ends of the string here are going to be long. And we're going to use these at a later step. So see how I'm going to leave that long? And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And then I'm going to snip off the edges here. And here are the arms with those long strings staying on there. Next, we're gonna grab about eight to 10 husks, depending on the size. So I'm gonna count these out just to see, and I think there's about eight here. Then I'm going to toss those into the warm water and have them soak for a little bit. All right, after they've soaked, I'm going to squeeze them out so we don't get water everywhere. Then I'm going to check them out and I'm gonna grab two of them for the hair and I'm gonna tip one upside down and I'm going to wrap that one around one of the husks. Then I'm going to find another husk that looks pretty good. And I'm going to start wrapping it around 
the, the husks that I have in my hand and I'm going to keep going all the way around. You don't want to end up with too many on one side so you want to really evenly distribute them. And um, I, you couldn't quite see it in this image but what I did is I'm putting the smooth side on the inside for all of these. Even though you're not going to see all of them, it's just a practice that I get into. Then here is the knot once and twice and then we're going to tie a single knot here and we're going to pull it really tight. Then we're going to add a couple more knots here just to be safe. And here's another perspective of that knot. Once and twice around. Too many or too few does not do the same trick. So you're going to just tie a regular knot and pull it really tight and see how it just cinches all of those corn husks up really nice. Then once that knot is there, I'm going to take it and just really crank it around a few times, four or five times, with one and the other one go the other way a couple more times, and then I'm going to tie it off three times. And this is just to make sure, because if you don't get this particular knot tight enough, your doll can fall apart. Then I'm going to trim the end off here just a little bit, and now we're ready to start peeling the husks back. So you want to be pretty gentle with this, but if you end up tearing them, that's okay. The key here is to get them to lay nice and flat, otherwise your doll is going to have a lumpy head. So we're going to keep pulling them down um, all around and just making sure that they lay nice and flat all the way around the doll, making sure that it's smooth. And we're going to keep doing this until we get to those last two husks. And the way we know that there's just two up there, if they're a little too twisted around to tell is one of them is facing the wrong way. So check it out. We can see that one's not facing the right way. So now we can make a neck. So we're going to do the same knot once, twice, and then we're going to um, just do a regular knot for the first one. Pull it really tight so she's got a, a nice neck there. And then we're going to tie it two more times. And these I don't trim these strings short. I just leave them lay down and they'll work their way into the rest of the doll. Now we're going to look at where her face is and where her back is and we're going to split her up the side. And this is to make room for the arms that we made. So we're going to tuck those arms right in there up as high as they can go. And then we're going to take another string and we're going to tie right up under her arms. The way I describe this in my classes is uh, think of summertime and wearing a tube top. Uh, that's where the top of this string is going to be. You want to get it really high up there so her arms stay up nice and tall. Trim the string there. And now we're going to take her and bend her elbow where we think um, it should bend and then go down to where it would look like if you had, you know, your hands on your hips. So that's where her waistline is. So we're going to do this same knot once and twice around and give it a good tight squeeze again and then tie it two more times and then her waist is all set. The next thing we're going to do is count out eight of the really sturdy uh, taller and wider pieces that you can find. And that's because this is going to be her dress and it's important that these are pretty strong because they're going to be holding up the doll. So we soak those in the water for a bit. Then we're ready to take out the husks after they soaked. Again, you want to squeeze them out so you're not getting water everywhere. And then we're going to tamp them down, bottom side down, the skinny side up to the top. And then we're going to just give them a little bit of a trim. And then we're going to go ahead and sort through some of these. I pick out the two best looking, strongest ones and those are going to be the outside. All right, the way I do this is I put the husks on side, side, back, front, side, side, back, front. And that way that you get a really good even distribution of the husks around for the skirt here. And those last two pieces are going to be your back and your front, just to finish the skirt off nice. So here comes the back and then the front. 
And then again, just like everything else, we're going to take our uh, sinew and we're going to find the waist. You can adjust her a little bit if you need to. And then we're going to tie, um, wrap it around once and then twice and then tie that knot just like all of the other knots that we've been tying. And then we are going to get ready to trim the bottom. And you want to make sure you got really good sharp scissors for this. And we're going to want to make sure that she stands up. Maybe she'll stand up nice on the first try. If not, just feel free to trim a little bit more. Nice and sturdy doll. There she is. Now we're going to find a piece, a nice long piece for a shirt. And we're going to soak that in the water. And similar to the arms, we're going to um, open this up and then find the middle and we're going to tear it. And then we're going to put those pieces uh, against each other and we're going to tear again, uh, maybe about an inch or so, depending on how wide you want your shirt to be. And then I take these two pieces and I crisscross them in the back and I crisscross them in the front with each other. And this is just a nice way to cover all of that up and give her a nice looking shirt. And of course we use the same knot for around her waist and we want to again uh, tie three knots in there to make sure everything stays in place. And these again we can uh, trim a little bit but of course you don't want to trim them too much. Just a reminder it's wax thread and they could slip out. Then we're going to take her arms and we're going to tie her wrists together. So I usually take the two strings from one of the wrists and I tie that around the other wrist. And again, I'm going to use three knots. There's one, two, and then three. And then I'm going to take her arms and bend elbows in there. So I'm going to pinch and then the corn husk is going to remember that bend. And then we're going to take those strings that we left long before so that we can come around in the back and tie them in the back. That way there aren't any strings hanging out in the front. And once we get our three knots here, we can snip these. Now that that's all set, we can start on her hair. So to do that, we're just going to start splitting all of the husks. Just keep splitting and splitting and splitting away. This can be a process can take a little bit of time, but you want to make sure that they are nice and split. Just keep in mind that the husk that went in this, uh, the right way, so it's skinny on top and wide at the bottom, that one you just want to be a little bit careful for because you could have some of the husk pieces fall off and that's okay because you should have plenty of hair up here in the doll. So again, you're just going to keep splitting and splitting all of these pieces until you're satisfied that they're split enough. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start to uh, fold her hair down so that it lays down nice around her face and there aren't any real lumps up at the top. And then we're going to give it another uh, knot right around her neck again when we have all of the hair all situated. And of course, when you're done with this, you could braid the hair. You can do all kinds of things with the hair here. Uh, it's not a requirement that you have the hair look like this. I do like having the hair like this because um, the husks like to dry um, up. They can get a little curly and get a little bit crazy. And here's a chance too that you can split some of those husks a little bit more if you want. And here she is. So now I'm going to take some string and I'm going to wrap it around her skirt. And this is to help make sure that when the corn husk dries that 
it doesn't get too dry and curly because she will end up not being able to stand up because those husks will curl and she'll tip over. So I just um, leave this on for a couple of days. Um, you can see her hair here, it's going to get a little bit uh, wavy and curly. And here's a couple dolls that I made a few days ago. So you can see the difference what, what her hair will do in a couple of days. And here she is a few days later. So you can just cut that string off and take the string off and there you have your doll all ready to share. We're still learning about our foods and traditional tools and crafts related to our foods. If you have any stories about corn husk dolls you want to share, please feel free to drop them in the comments or send us an email. Yanwa Danito.